this is 55 TV and we are at Follow Your Art, the village underground in support of anti-slavery with the lovely Michaela. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Very well. How are you? Not bad at all. Um, tell, talk to me about the anti-slavery and what's on the agenda at the moment? Okay, well Anti-Slavery International is actually the world's oldest human rights organisation unfortunately, and I say unfortunately because we've been around for nearly 175 years and 175 years in which slavery has continued and so what we're doing is trying to work to eradicate the slavery that affects nearly 21 million people across the world today. If you think of 21 million people that's nearly four times the size of people in London that are in slavery across the world and we're talking about something very specific in terms of people being forced to work against their will so that's men, women and children in lots of different industries um, including sex trafficking, including kids who are brought into the UK from Vietnam and forced to work cultivating cannabis, including people working, making and um, picking cotton that goes into clothes that we buy from certain shops and things so um, lots of different types of slavery affecting 21 million people across the world today. It's crazy to think that you've been going for that long and congratulations to your fellow co-workers yeah. and for the whole of that amount of time that you've been mm -hmm. going but it's crazy to think that we are still in this situation isn't it really yeah, in the western world. Absolutely in the western world and I'm glad you said that because people tend to think it's happening somewhere else across the world yeah. but it's not just happening in you know poor developed countries mm -hmm. it's something that's very very apparent in the UK I've spoken about kids from Vietnam I've spoken about um, women being trafficked from countries in West Africa um, and places like China into sex trafficking. It's happening in America with um, migrant workers being forced to work on plantations growing things like tomatoes for particular companies. So it's something that's prevalent here and the rest of the world. Sure. Yeah. I suppose we're in a very tricky time with the economy, with the, the growth of the population across the planet and all these things mm. really account for a lot of the slavery that's yeah. going on. We tend to forget with our own troubles with the economy yeah. that it is even worse for people that actually don't have a living to yeah. bear upon themselves. Yeah. Um, how have you noticed this vast change in recent the recent year with slavery? Okay. Do you know what? To be really um, sort of clear about it, the economy, the changes in the global economy in the recent years haven't really affected slavery that much. I mean, with the numbers of people in slavery have increased, the estimation numbers of people in slavery has increased. That's simply because of the way in which um, places like the International Labour Organization are calculating the data. The main problem with the issue of people in slavery is the fact that there's a lack of political will by governments and companies to deal with it. So the decision makers who could actually be taking steps towards eradicating slavery aren't taking enough of those steps. And I always think it's because of us. It's because of me and you and other people because we're not putting enough, enough pressure on them. We have the power to call them into action to make those changes and we need to keep putting pressure on them to make those changes to make sure that the laws that they're in, that are in place are implemented and that people are protected from slavery. We are talking to you, you have to make a change, we have to do something as a group, we can't leave it to the big industries and the politicians to make that decision, we have to make that decision for them, don't Absolutely. we? We have to keep pressuring them, you have to keep writing letters to your MPs, every time you go into a shop you ask them how is their supply chain um, sourced so that they're making sure that no slavery is taking part in any, um, taking place in any part of it and it's down to us because we are the ones with that power, they're not going to listen if we're not raising our voice. If you think back historically, the fact that we had slavery for over 400 years legally, 400 years, millions of people affected, within 20 years of the campaign starting, the transatlantic slave trade came to an end because people stood up and said, this is wrong, we need to take action. And with all the things we've got at our disposal today, your Facebook, your Twitter, your events like this, bringing people together, raising awareness about the issue, if we had a mass movement of people coming together and saying you government take action, you company take action and standing in solidarity with the people in slavery we could make this sense, we could bring it to an end. You heard it here first, make something happen. 
get on and write and stand up. This is 55 TV. It's really great to be here again for the event. We're going to see some artists later on. It's great that the street art and the contemporary art are showing force on this. As you say, we all have to come and stand together on this, don't we? Absolutely. So visit Anti Slavery International, www.antislavery.org. Get some more information. Tell one other person about what you've heard. Go out, take action, write one letter. If you do nothing else, just tell one other person because you don't know if that's person, someone that's going to be the Thomas Clarkson of 2013 and change the world and try to galvanise people to end slavery. Great. Website is down here. Check them out. This is 55TV. We'll see you in a bit.